Gilligan is wearing number 11, and uh, Big Chuck is wearing number 9. It's kind of on our roster. There you go. Okay. Personal. <laughs> Big Chuck wearing 9. Yeah. Milligan 14. It helps that they have the names on the back, though. That, yeah, I, Milligan's that, that, wearing 11. Okay, there you yeah. go. It does help that the numbers are on the back, too. Here we go, man. Let's get this thing going. Right. You better take a deep breath because we're about to get underway. I know it. <laughs> Milligan and Murphy going at it with the tip, which I love seeing the tip. Absolutely. They have a point <laughs> yeah. We're used to those high school rules here in Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Who would have thought you'd ever get excited over a tip-off? Right. <laughs> you know, I think this might be expected. We got uh, Detroit coming out in the zone. Milligan shot fake. Short corner, now up to Nunn. Nunn had the game-winning assist, pops the three in and out. Had the game-winning assist on Friday night, found Wilford in the right wing with a lot of pressure, banged one home. It probably got fouled, too, to be honest. And <laughs> yeah. uh, had the game-winning bucket. Detroit's big, strong guy down there, number three, Murphy, taking it to the hole, drawing a foul. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I think Detroit will you know, obviously want to keep the, the pace of this game you know, at, at slow. I don't think you're going to want to see them get out and run, which is going to be a little different for the TVL, but definitely don't want to let this game uh, tempo get out of hand because there's really there's no breathers. You know, yeah. you're going to have to <laughs> use your timeouts wisely today if you're Detroit. Yeah, can't get in foul trouble either. No, that's exactly <laughs> right. Murphy free throw is good. Pretty cool looking jerseys. I always like to see, you know, some of these uh, – the professional mascots and the professional oh, jerseys that they have. Always really cool to see. Uh, and, you know, because you know it's it's fully about their city. No doubt. And, and you know, the, the TBL does a great job with that. The marketing and everything just looks so clean and, and professional. Yep. Milligan finds the Eves driving baseline. Eves had a big game Friday night. Shot no good. Big 29-point performance against the Columbus Condors on Friday. Murphy dribble penetration. Kick out to Stewart. Stewart hits a fall away, Jay. Big time jumper there. And yeah. Quick start for Detroit. Actually, I may have, that was Hampton at Hampton. knocked one home. There you go. I missed it. Uh, of and course, Corey Wilford. Wilford. Him, yeah. Looked down for the stat sheet, and Corey Wilford made me pay. 3 threes your score early on. <laughs> I'm about to adjust from t uh, radio to TV here. Right yeah. Then. I know, me too. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big adjustment. <clears throat> None good pen dribble penetration. And Wilford back to back. Man, oh, man. <laughs> Corey Wilford can shoot that thing from the parking lot. I have confidence it's going down. I yeah, mean, he's a tremendous shooter. He's one of those where it seems like every time he shoots it, you feel like it's going in. Yeah, we were doing the third region tournament here, and I think Caleb Farkas made a comment about well, this game's over unless there's a Reggie Miller in the stands. I said, I interviewed Corey Wilford at halftime, and that's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure, and Hampton's now getting hot for the hustle. Milligan, high post, tough mm, take. Man. Ooh, almost a lot of body, but it looked like clean up top. They're going to call it on number 13, Stewart. Number 13. And that's another guy, D'Angelo Stewart, that I've seen through the league quite a bit. Milgram go line, shoot two shots. And that's the cool thing about this league. It's almost like a family. You know, different guys on different teams in different years, but they all have the same dream, same goal. Yeah, uh, and they know each other. Oh, absolutely. Some of these guys have bounced around between separate or several different uh, TBL teams. You know, Friday night, a lot of those guys knew each other in, from the Columbus team. And so there was some uh, spirited trash talking. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that took place. 8-6 owns real lead here early on in this ballgame. But the, the pace so far has favored uh, Detroit. We're still early on, though. <clears throat> you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure what Hustle's going to be able to do. They're going to have to go through stretches where they rest offensively. You know, just, just having the five players there. <clears throat> yeah, they're going to really have to take advantage of their, <laughs> of their timeouts and their breaks. Yeah. A little bit of one-on-one -on -one between Stewart and Wilford, and he hits one right at the shot clock buzzer. Good take. 
Yeah, I'm gonna, the shot clock's a little different for me as well. This is a little bit of adjustment. Yeah. Voto along 18 foot or no good. Oh. Tough take. Yeah, and you're seeing a lot of high flying going on between these two teams. Tons of athletes. East, Wilford. Man. Right it down, Corey Wilford. <laughs> three for three from beyond the arc to open the game. Yeah, he's tough. He's you tough. can just see it when it leaves his hands. I mean, the confidence he's shooting with it carries all over. Trying to get a little bit of a flex offense going, but a deep three from Weiss, no good. I think they're going to need they're going to need a, a a lot of threes today. I think Detroit. I mean, to with with the lack of depth. I mean, that's really the, the, the great neutralizer when you talk about the three ball and. So far, thoroughbreds in front, 11 Hanging eight. with them, yeah. yeah. I think if you're on bro, you want to try to push the tempo as much as you possibly can. Oh, I think so, too. None, deep three. No good. A boat with the offensive board. Now, they got hammered. Thoroughbreds did Friday night on the glass. Yeah, I heard that was, you know, listen, listening to it, uh, the, the run at the end of the game by Columbus is really just Owens bro getting outworked on the board. Yeah. That's something – I know Coach Anderson wants to get corrected immediately. Yeah, at one point it was 90-70, Thoroughbred's big at lead. Uh, but the Condors came out and made a game of it at the end. And a tough take at the rim by the Hustle, contested by two Thoroughbreds. And here come Eve's layup good. So tough in transition. He is, man. And that's heard a lot of that on the broadcast on Friday. 13-8 is a timeout from Detroit. And like I say, it's one of those games, Ben, where you're going to kind of wonder, hey, do we take a timeout here? I know they're going on a run, but we're going to need every single one yeah. of the timeouts we can get. Yeah, for sure. I don't think they're going to want to take any of them with them. No. Uh, if he leaves with some of them in his pocket, then he's done something wrong. <laughs> you're exactly right. Uh, but we've got the 13-8 Thoroughbreds with uh, 7.50 to go here in this uh, first quarter. Uh, pretty good up and down, exciting game so far. And I do want to say a little bit something about the officiating on Friday night. I thought it was awesome. I, yeah, you know, I've heard a lot of compliments. Uh, you know, and, and in doing the – got to think, too, these officials have dreams to, to, to officiate, you know, in bigger leagues as well or maybe, you know, move on up all the way to the top, right? And that, that, they're kind of part of the league as well. And uh, I was always impressed with the officiating in the league. You know, when you, when you can have – a when you can have three officials and you don't even know they're out there. That's the key. You know they've done a good job. That's, yeah, that, that could be, that's, you know, I think that's got to be an official's, uh, you know, number one compliment you can give them. Yeah. We didn't even know you were there. Yeah, they did great. And one other thing I love about uh, the TBL is the, <laughs> the amount of female officials. Oh, you got Big Chuck out there. Yeah. I heard this. The crowd trying to get, get in there, get in there. Oh. <laughs> Well done. Absolutely. Young man coming out on the court trying to get him a shot here between uh, or during the timeout. Love it, man. The crowd really got behind. It's a good little crowd in here <laughs> it on is. Sunday. I'm telling you, this thing's going to grow and grow as the season goes along. You know, talking to Chris Allison, uh, he said we can't, we can't do games at noon on Sunday. He said people are at church. Absolutely. You know, so yep. we, we made what we thought was a logical decision and bumped it back to three. Gives you time to go to church, get you some lunch, and come out to a thoroughbred game. And I, yeah, I think it's a great idea. And Stewart with a nice fall away, 15-footer. <clears throat> Ease, dribble penetration out huh. to Wilford. Shot fake, pull up deep two, in and out. Made him move off his spot that time to yeah. Detroit and couldn't knock it down. Tough take. Oh, oh man. man, in and out. Murphy almost had him one. Milgan came off the bench Friday night. I thought he added a great boost to what these throwbacks. Oh, Bodo, ah, can't finish. Big Chuck just a little off the mark there in the paint so far today. And a three in transition for the hustle. That's Jody Hill, man. That guy can light you up. Kind of reminds me of a little bit of a Corey Wilford with a little bit more penetration potential. Yeah. Milgan in and out. Good job. Chuck on the boards, follow away right-handed shot off the glass. No good, huh? Just can't find the bucket right now. Chuck, nice little, went glass that time. Still couldn't get it to yeah. fall. Eves on the rebound, running the floor. 
Ah, uh, gets one trying to away. try to thread a needle and got it deflected and stone away. Here comes the hustle and transition, dribble out. Still, though, you're Still. making them run a little bit, you know, and I think that's going to pay dividends later. It'll add up. It's like a body shot in the UFC. It doesn't right. look pretty at first, but, boy, they stack up after two or three, <laughs> you know, periods. That's true. Hampton in the corner and settles some things out. Right-handed Joe in the paint, tough, nice taking it in, and yeah. draws one. Well done. Yeah, right now, just a little bit more energy from Detroit in the last couple possessions. I, you know, I don't know if it's going to be sustained energy, but when they go in those bursts of two or three minutes of going hard, hustle look pretty good. They do, yeah. I know they, they, they suffered a tough road setback up in Kokomo in their last outing. Kokomo's a team that Owensboro saw in the preseason and got a big win on the road up there. Uh, Kokomo is tough. They are they're, tough. They're yeah. undefeated right now at 3-0. and And that, that shows you, and I know it was just an exhibition game, a preseason game, uh, but the Thoroughbreds in their first game together go up there and get a nice road win. I think it shows the potential of this team here in Owensboro. Yeah. Milligan dumped down Lufile, just checked in. Me Back shot. it down. I had tough. Huh? He was tremendous, uh, it sounded, on Friday night. He come on late, started slow, had a great end of third and a part of fourth where he was basically just a man amongst everybody. You can see the size there, athletic ability. Yeah. I'm, I get myself caught up watching the uh, the stream here, Vic. Uh, uh, Vic. Vic. <laughs> Coming off the radio, Mr. Ben Hardesty over here. Look at this stream, man. It looks nice and clean here on the TBL network. Yep. Uh, again, that stream brought to you by Wonder Boy Media. Yeah. They, they hook us up. Got, it's nice. Got all the equipment. <laughs> it's looking good. Yeah, I got uh, – Drew over here in studio with me every Thursday with uh, with Coach. Uh, he comes in and oh, uh, yeah. gets the uh, gets the footage of Coach and the player. This week we have Matt Hart, who's been uh, I guess out with the injury. I didn't, I was unaware. They kept that under wraps on the radio. I didn't yeah. even, even I didn't know that. <laughs> All right, Weiss for the hustle, calling out some plays. Everyone maybe try to get an ISO on the block. They got it. Layup, no good. But Stewart, but he just draw a foul. Yeah. Stewart is a former Owensboro thoroughbred himself, so he's familiar with the Owensboro Sports Center here. Yep. And that's why I was curious if the uh, if the road players hung out after the game. I know with COVID and whatnot, I don't know what the restrictions are. I know used to, you know, the players come out and talk to the fans, and yeah, you really get to know the players, and even the players that have, you know, in the opposing jersey, you get to know them from when they played here in the past. Yeah, they, uh, they had a nice little, uh, you know, the players after the game didn't even go to the locker room. They went straight to the area yeah. and started signing that's autographs awesome. and taking pictures. And they did that for a while. Yeah, that's great. Wilford off a screen, jab step, step back, look like he wanted to pop it, gives off to none. None, pull a 15-footer, got it. Yeah, that's nice there. Yeah, he's tough. They needed that. It ends a little Detroit run there. 5.07 remaining here in the first quarter. And a step back. Ooh. Mm. I'm telling you, Jody Hill gets going. He's a dagger, man. Yeah. A little Flat bit of a curl. From Milligan dumped down. Tough take, Lufile in the paint. That name just is intimidating in itself. Oh. Meshack, man. That dude, he, he yeah. like a baby shack down there yeah. going to work, man. He is. And nice there's job. your steal. That was one thing on the first game of the year against Columbus. Uh, Thoroughbreds couldn't create a whole lot of turnovers when they were in Columbus. They could. They, they only got. They only created six turnovers, and uh, never was ever really get up and down off of uh, transition transition break, turnovers. Yeah. You know, and they got got them one, got them one there, or at least several on Friday night. Davenport just in. Oh, and in out of the hands of Lufau. And I think today, you know, with, with like I say, with Detroit only having the five players, if you're able to create a couple turnovers and able to get out and run from it, it changes the game completely. Right now, Detroit holding a two-point lead with four minutes remaining here in this first quarter. Weiss, they wanted to get into a set play. I think that's what the hustle are going to have to do is 
slow things down, get into some sets. Half court set, yeah. With just the five guys playing, tough take by Murphy and in. And that kid's built different, too. Look at He sure is. Upper body. Shit. Yeah. Talking to Tyler Dixon for the games, he looks like he's an Olympic sprinter. Yeah. <laughs> Donovan to none. Back to a little pick and roll. Oh, there it is. Nice pass right there. Well done. Great job by Davenport. Fake the shot. Dumps down to Meshack and lays it in. 22-20. And, you know, you said half-court sets. They've served Detroit well, I feel like, here in this first yeah. quarter. And a pull of three, short. Here comes Thobrez. They like to run it, especially with none. He's a magician in the open floor. Pull up 15-footer, yes. Nice. Well done. You know, that's a guy that stepped into a starting role for, for Matt Hart, who's on the shelf right now. And you'd never know he stepped into the role. You'd yeah. think that was his role. I mean, he's played really well for him. You can't tell that he's a guy that's coming off the bench. No. Good depth for Owensboro. Yeah, and he's masterful with the ball. And there, there's uh, – Murphy drawing him a, drawing him a foul. On Coach, Anderson. Coach Anderson, right in front of him, not happy over there on yeah. the bench. Was a little contact there though. I love it. I love it. You know, you and I have done a lot, a lot, a lot of high school basketball games. Absolutely. And uh, in high school, it's either no foul or it's you can't exhale. No. That's it, yeah. But in here, they they will call a foul only if it affects your shot. Absolutely, yeah. You know, we, that's that's what I like to see. Honestly, I do too. I mean, man, you know, you see, we've seen it's a lot of light. forty free throw games that you know it becomes more of a free throw shooting contest than a yeah. than an actual basketball game. We got a timeout here with two fifty four to play in the first. All knotted up at twenty two twenty two. One of the teams I want to, or uh, one of the nonprofits I want to talk about here is Team Carly's. Their mission is to provide people with the physical disabilities the use of special jogging strollers so they can participate in the sport of running. Team Carly wants others who can't walk or run to experience the energy and excitement of racing. Those with physical disabilities often feel frustrated by their limited mobility, and the sport of running is something they would not be able to experience without the use of the special jogging strollers. Also, the runners who push the strollers also experience a joy they won't soon forget. Thank you, Team Carly, for all you do. Just one of many, you know, the yeah. profits here in Owensboro does a tremendous job. Special needs night here at the Owensboro Sports Center. Thoroughbreds are wearing puzzle pieces jerseys. Tremendous. And a good good uh, showing here today from all of the uh, the charities down in the end zone down there. It's a little different here at the Sports Center without the stage. Uh, you know, the, the stage being gone, it's like a staple of this place, but uh, I hated it at first, yeah. but I've really grown accustomed to it. And it, just, it adds so much more room down there to do things. Well, and, you know, in years past, the, any activities had to be done in the concourse. Sure. And now you can do it out here where the stage used to be and still be a part of the game. I love that, yeah. And you can always put a stage up if you want to. But yeah. You have that opportunity uh, to have it open if not. Murphy at the line to shoot two shots. Actually, it might be three shots. I believe it is, yeah. <clears throat> Oh, they're saying it was a two. Okay. okay. So well, there's inside. multiple lines on the floor. We fell victim to this during the high school tournament here. That you know, so, which line is it? You yeah. Know, but the, that third best line is a little further out than, than what we're used to. You know, it didn't mess with the high school kids. You it could sure tell. did. Yeah. They were they'd be shooting pro threes and a lot. Like, they, I'm wide open out here. That's, yeah. There's a reason why you're yeah. way out there. Yeah. Pro or, and Corey Wilford don't care. No. On that, just even short. his misses look like they're going in. <clears throat> it was right on line, just a tad short. Hampton dribbling around, trying to work it down low. And you see that that's Detroit's game plan today. Yep. Ah, uh, long shot by Murphy. No good. And here comes the Thoroughbreds in transition. None behind his back. Kick out to oh Griffith. Three. Oh, man. What a great pass by Nunn, though. Underneath and a pick by Lufa. Lay up off the glass and in. Well done by the big throw. Big man picking the, the point guard spot yeah. there. Nice job. Versatility from the big man. In and out dribble by Hill. And, and a curling three by Hampton. Detroit's here to play. That came down from Detroit for a victory. I don't yeah. care if there's five of them. They're here to win this ball game, and they've had a really nice first quarter so far, 27-24. None off the screen. Ooh, crossover. Kick out Griffith right inside the three-point line. Got it, this Got one. It. Well done. 
You know, that's another guy I saw. He played some games against the Thoroughbreds in Las Vegas, man, and he buried us in here a couple times yeah. at the Sports Center. He can absolutely stroke it if he can get it going. 27-26. Nice spin move. It's Nobody home. Right. Yep. Looking for Wilford in the corner. Three on three. Wilford's going to pop it. Oh, he's getting a little cold. He's streaky, you know. Characteristic. Tough take by Hill. The shooter shoot. Corey never saw a shot out there open no. that he didn't like. Uh uh. Even sometimes covered up. Davenport. Nice, nice cut, cut right there. Great pass. Davenport to Wilford streaking down the lane. He's more than just a spot up shooter there. Yeah. That nice cut and finish at the rim. Cuts the lead to one. Might try to go a little two for one here, but they just. Be close. Intent now to just get a possession. And some time on the clock, 25 seconds to go. Outlet out to Wilford. Wilford layup deflected and out of bounds. Oh, nice job by Hill there. And it even went off, went off the back of Corey Wilford. Oh, wow. See a little trash talk between the two there. I thought Corey was going to oop that thing. Yeah, I did too. Looking for uh, Davenport. 15 seconds to play in the first. Detroit up 29-28. Hill with it. Got to stick on him. Oh, a deep three. Wilford Ooh, defender got man. it. Man. Six seconds to go in the quarter. Corey Wilford looking to return the favor. Hesitation all the way to the rim. Layup off the glass and in at the horn. Well done. Good job by Corey Wilford to run the floor there. 32-30 at the end of a action-packed first quarter here at the Owens World Sports Center. Yep. Uh, we'll take a break. Anything kind of stick out with you uh, as far as, like, rebounding and turnovers and whatnot? That uh, I feel like it's pretty well. It's even. pretty even, yeah. Thoroughbreds at 12 uh, rebounds, uh, the hustle at 13, and that's much better than, I think, than the Thoroughbreds showed here on uh, Friday night. Yeah. They were out-rebounded mightily yeah. uh, by uh, the Columbus Condors. About to get the uh, second quarter underway. I'll tell you, it's another thing I'm going to have to adjust. This this is a professional event here. You got the, the constant update with the stats. Yeah. And, uh, this team down here has done a tremendous job. Just another thing that Chris Allison's put together really well. You know, pretty cool. We, you don't get that privilege night in and night out uh, at the high school level. But when you go to the state tournament, call, like you and I have called Absolutely. several games at Rupp Arena. Yeah. Uh, you get that kind of get catered. Maybe, yeah. Maybe absolutely. pampered by pampered, getting these stats. Yeah. You know, wow. here I do a little Kentucky Wesleyan stuff here in town, and and they do a pretty good job, you know, of keeping you keeping you up to date. But it, it is, it's nice to, and especially the the in depth stats. You know, I can I can kind of guess at a field goal percentage, yeah. but you don't have to guess here. You can just look down and and see it. It's really nice to have that in front of you. Murphy at the line, shooting two shots after the strong take to the rim, and a nice spin move draws him two foul shots. Knocks down one and two from the line. Makes it 33-30. This is a quarter I'd like to see Owensboro start to impose some will a little bit here. Yeah. I don't think they have an answer for Meshack down low. Oh, um, they got an offensive three seconds. Okay. You know, I don't think so either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Detroit coach yelling for three seconds, and he thought he got the call that he wanted, and the official said, that's not what you were asking for, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. You know, and, and uh, something that is, has been pretty fun to watch is the players can have somewhat of a dialogue with the referees. Now, it can't be anything can't be anything oh, extensive. Nice what save. a great save by Eve in the corner. None. Split the double scoop shot. No good. Batted around and a reach-in foul on none. And the thoroughbreds can't get anything around the basket to no. fall. You know, a lot of their stuff has came either on direct layups or, or, or beyond the arc. But, but yeah, you know, that's another thing we're not used to. You know, we're used to that quick trigger. You even look at an official wrong at the high school level yeah. and you're getting teed up, which is probably the way it should be. Yeah. And you give a little more leeway to these professionals. Well, you're dealing with adult talking with adults. That's right. Here at the right. professional level. You don't want no kids back talking you no. at the high school level. Hill, tough shot on the baseline. Man. He's so good, man. Yeah. Eves, hesitation. Now, he was quiet in that first quarter. Eves was. 
He led this team in scoring on Friday night. Here he is in the corner. Three. Got it. Quick don't, trigger there. Yeah. Don't want to wake him up. With Corey Wilford on the bench, they'll be looking for him as the uh, as the scorer on the floor. Should be 35. There you go. After that bucket, makes it 35, 36. Well, here on the, yeah. And then the three in the corner made it 36, 33 coming up. Just trying to get everything <laughs> caught up here on the on my scoreboard. You got to multitask, yeah. man. I mean, that's one of those things. It's, it's an adjustment period. Oh, straight to the basket and lays it in. What a take from Hampton. Really good off the dribble, and they're really hurting the thoroughbreds in, in the paint so far, and that's surprising to me. You know, I think the thoroughbreds could do more. Like, you got a jump shot there uh, by Davenport, but I think you could bully these hustle around a little bit. They haven't really tried much yeah. so far. I think uh, I think maybe it's one of those things where you look over at the bench, you think, oh, they've only got five, you know, and then you kind of you kind of go on at half speed thinking, well, we're just, we'll just run them out of here and, and Detroit is not so fast. You know, we're here to play. Yeah. You know, you just heard, oh, man, just heard Anderson holler, we want some lane touches. Come on, lane yeah, touches. absolutely. So. <laughs> Haven't seen it much. No. Ooh. Boom. And a corner three by Hill. And I, you felt that one coming, and Anderson is not happy right now. Not at all. No, and, you know, rightfully so. You know, he's getting outworked by, by five guys who are here to try to make a statement in here. <laughs> Sometimes when you have your back against the wall, you got nothing to lose. You, you know, come out and play as loose as you can. And so far, Detroit has been the aggressor in this one. Yep. And they're calling that one a deep, deep two. I thought he got him a three in the corner. Yeah, I did as well. We're, we're, we're adjusting to the lines yeah. as well. Just like uh, the high school kids are coming here for the third region tournament. Uh, we got a timeout here. We're 9.32 to play in the second quarter. It's Detroit leads 40-33 to 33 over our Owensboro Thoroughbreds. I uh, just want to talk about Dream Riders of Kentucky as a nonprofit organization that provides equine assisted activities and therapies to adults and children with special needs. Since 2003, we've been making dreams come true for children and adults who on a daily basis face physical, cognitive, and or emotional challenges. Through our equine assisted programming, muscles are strengthened, minds are expanded, and friendships are formed for a lifetime. Thank you, Dream Riders, for giving individuals this great opportunity. That is pretty cool, man. You know, uh, I don't think humans deserve animals. No, yeah, yeah, you're <laughs> right on that. You know, because they they just have that. Uh, and I, you know, it's something that's new to me over the past couple of years is the horse therapy. You know, yeah. it's something that it really, really cool, especially for autistic uh, kids. Uh, it's it's just, just a huge help. Nice screen and roll. Oh, they're gonna get a deflection off of uh, big big uh, Chuck over there. Yeah. He, Right now, they're just quite very active on the defensive end. They're getting a lot of hands on the basketball right now. And Thoroughbred's just kind of lethargic here to start the second quarter. You know, and it doesn't look like the Thoroughbred or the Hustle are spent, expending a whole lot of energy offensively, but they're running good sets. And there's your defensive three <laughs> seconds, or offensive three seconds, yeah. D'Angelo Stewart says, I just got here. <laughs> you even have time to set up this tent yet. Yeah. And uh, he let oh. he let Coach Anderson know about it because he thought uh, he thought Coach talked him into the call. He might have, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, he might have <laughs> called it for him. Detroit got one on this end though, so we're even now. Yeah. I'd like to just really just see see Owensboro work through the post a little more. You know, I thought even just having uh, me, Shaq, and and Chuck out there together. Yeah. And maybe go go big and see what happens, especially with Detroit not trying to push the tempo. Well, Wilford and Nunn and Eves are such great ball handlers. But that's a pretty good set out of, out of bounds. You had had almost like a horn set yeah. set up on the with the high post. Pretty good. Tough uh, offensive rebound. Ooh. And a contested shot by Stewart. No good. And thoroughbreds are on the run. Got to get moving here. Eves, three, wing. Ah. And the thoroughbreds are ice cold. They right are. They, they're not hitting anything even around the basket. Nothing is falling right now. Just got to get it going. Yeah, they need to be careful. Looks like a go to the bench here. Cameron Moore checking in. 
I'll tell you what, I'd like to get me a, that puzzle, puzzle piece, piece jersey. jersey. Yeah, that's sweet, <laughs> man. What a – it's just something you don't see at this level, I feel like. Yeah. Man. It's awesome. Right side, Hampton, good dribble move, pull-up shot long. Man, no good, but just Weiss worked, with the offensive man. board. He's just getting outworked right now. Murphy, tough take. Man, and a great finish. Great man, oh, man. finish over our Bodu. My gosh, that was awesome. 42-33 right now, and the thoroughbred is really struggling in this half. Only one bucket so far. Can't get him one there, huh? He'll get a chance to uh, at least settle something out of out of bounds. Guys, uh, nothing coming easy right now for these thoroughbreds. That's a 10-2 run for Detroit here in this second quarter. It's a rough go of it right now. Nothing falling for anyone. Yeah. Cameron Moore coming in, replaces Donovan. Cameron Moore's got a cheering section here at the yeah, Sports Center. Eves off the curl and the inbounds. There you go. And they needed that baseline short corner shot. And he needed it. And they've been getting good looks. They're just not knocking them down. And that time, Eves knocks it down. Again, yeah, if you're just tuning in to this game between the Hustle and the Thoroughbreds, Hustle just five players tonight. Oh. But, man, just kind of getting what they want here. They are. They're getting anything they want, you know. And, and Owensboro hasn't really pushed the tempo much, so I don't think wear them out. Yeah. They haven't created any turnovers. And Detroit shot it well enough to where they haven't gotten transition much. They'll call that one on the floor, all right. I know uh, Chuck wanted to say he was going up with it. Forty-four, <laughs> thirty-five. Got to make you knock down your free throws here. I believe we're gonna have a timeout from Detroit. Yeah. You know, he's doing a good job of calling these timeouts, mixed in with media timeouts. He is. Give these guys a break. They don't look, they don't even look phased. But, I mean, no. it is, oh, we're only halfway through the second period. I think it'll be fourth quarter before you start to see the weary legs. And, uh, I think Owensboro keeps it close. Into the fourth quarter, it's going to be an obvious advantage to the thoroughbred. Yeah. You know, and they, they can't go away from what they, from what, well, for one, they've gone away from everything that they should be doing, according to, Coach Anderson. Absolutely. And that's getting paint touches. I can't even say that they need to, need to come back to it because they've never even been to it as far as just imp, imposing themselves in the paint. They just have not done that yet, and there's opportunity. Yeah, and it sounded like Friday they really hammered the paint. Yeah. You know, that, was a, that was a Chuck in the first half, Meshack in the second half, and let's see if they can get that thing going here. Coach Anderson will definitely adjust on this until he gets it right. Yeah. Nice. Coast to coast lay in. <laughs> By the young man in the thoroughbred jersey. Yeah, really cool. That's a Corey Wilford jersey. Yeah, it is. Over there. Oh, got an Apollo jersey you do, on. yeah. You got Apollo Eagles jersey <laughs> over there. Who's a 23? Any 23s well, you can remember? That's in Bubba your... Long, I do believe. Okay. That's a Bubba Long. And that's the jerseys they wore when he was there, played his ball at Eastern Kentucky University. Yeah. Uh, Bubba Long. Uh, did he transfer down to one of the Florida schools, Florida International? I think he did, okay. yeah, before it was all said and done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, man, talking about transferring uh, the portal at the college game is just going bananas right now. It is. And it's something I think it's only going to continue. You know, we'll see if, if anything's changed with that. But, man, a lot of kids going the way of the portal, especially with it being, you know, the COVID year. Yeah, yeah. And at the high school level as well, to be, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We talked a little bit about that off air. When you, when you allow <laughs> high school seniors to come back for another year, you know, it, it opens a, lot, a big can of worms, and I'm curious to see how that's going to work yeah, out, I especially too. with out-of-state kids. But the restrictions are all the things that you have, to, all the boxes you have to check in order to be able to fulfill that fifth year as a high schooler. There's a bunch. So Is it I, a lot? Yeah, I don't see it just being like a Wild West type deal sure. where people are transferring like well, crazy. That, I don't think it should. Yeah, yeah but, you know, it, it could get to a point where you might see a couple of teams be impacted positively by it. <clears throat> Whereas if you're the other teams, you're like, man, I thought you were gone. Uh, yeah, I don't want to deal with this kid anymore. <laughs> yeah. And right now, Detroit's just beating Owensboro off the dribble. I mean, they, they, they're just, Owensboro's getting outworked in this game. Got to find a way to start limiting that on-ball penetration. 
Right side out of bounds for the hustle right in front of the uh, thoroughbreds bench. You'll see several guys for the thoroughbred that don't even come out of this game. Yeah, I mean, it's. You know, you'll at least the, the backcourt. Not seeing none come out much. Yeah. And a tough take. See, that's just too By easy. Hill. I mean, uh, the, the penetration for Detroit right now, they're getting to the rim as much as they want. Owensboro has a definitive size advantage. It's just right now they've got to figure it out. Down nine in this game with 621 to go until halftime. Man. And there you go. <laughs> I voted with a tough or a nice defensive or offensive rebound and a layup off the uh, reverse. Corey's asking, where's the, I got hammered there. No <laughs> call. Significant height advantage for these thoroughbreds and depth advantage. I'm like you. I think it's going to be a impact deal throughout the course of the game. You'll see it finally take its toll, or at least we're hoping. You, you would hope if you're yeah. an Owensboro fan. Three from Wilford, no good. And he's ice cold this afternoon. He couldn't miss Friday night. Started three for three and hadn't hit one since. And that kid, and he want one, but that's that's what I'm saying. They're going to let you body up. Yeah, and, and a little out of control there if you're heel. Nine got him one, and none seems to be the really only consistent player out on the perimeter for these thoroughbreds tonight. And you can see Detroit the coaches from the bench telling them slow the pace down. Yeah. <laughs> don't, 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 don't try to run. And it, you know, it goes against everything that they like to play, but they, you got to keep this game in front of them. Even though they still lead by five, it's starting to slip a little bit here. You know, it was 41 to 28 That's in true. the first quarter uh, Friday night. And now look, now look at our score with five minutes to play. <clears throat> Different pace completely. Yeah. And right there, they, they slowed it down so much that they, they pick up a shot clock violation. That's an unusual shot clock violation yeah. in the TVL. <laughs> I know. it. Normally, there's about 13 seconds on the shot clock and when there's a shot go up. And there's none. He's killing it. That might be the guy right yeah. there. So he, he's... He shot it better than any uh, thoroughbred this afternoon, and single-handedly bringing the thoroughbreds back here within three. Yeah, they're, they're struggling at the guard position to keep him in front. Hill, tough fadeaway no on way, the baseline. That, I was about to say, if that goes. But Murphy there on the glass. They're just not, you know, that's going to be, that's a, that's a growing concern, I think, if you're Coach Anderson, is the ability to rebound the basketball. Too many second-chance looks so far early in the season. I think they like that ISO with uh, none. You might see some more plays drawn up for him. Well, they'll space it out. Yeah, it, it's worked to perfection so far. A little mid-range jumper has been money in the bank for none so yeah. far in this first half. And a pull-up deep, too. Man. Man. Yeah, he's starting to starting to get it going yeah. a little bit here. Yeah. I think the Thoroughbreds just got to lock down defensively, and they're going to be fine in this one. Sometimes the weak, weak side help Friday night, and half of this game has has not been there. And right now, I feel, and I think Detroit's throwing up some shots too, and they're they're going down. Oh, heat check from none. Yeah, I I, I like it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Let's get the pace going here. The pace is what the Thoroughbreds want. Oh, and off the face of Milligan, not. Arbato comes, oh, man, I tell you. Yeah. Thought he had a clean block there, and Coach, An Coach Anderson did too. You know, he and if you're Milligan, you're probably time. talking to Arbato like, hey, I'm not your outlet. That's right. <laughs> that's, yeah, I'm not that guy. Yeah. And yeah. That, Chuck's telling him right now, like, hey, that's my bad, you know. Yeah. But uh, a meeting at the summit with Arbato Absolutely. there defensively. Yeah, that was a nice, uh, nice challenge by Big Chuck, but. Got called for the foul. Yeah. Free throw no good, so score remains 50 to 45. And, you know, Thoroughbreds have the ball there with an opportunity to cut in the lead a little further, turn over, and then you immediately get foul on the other end. Yeah, last thing Tough you want to swing. do. Right, start compounding things. One for two goes Murphy at the line. And here comes the hot hand none. I think he likes that matchup with Weiss. Wilford wide open. Got yes. it. All it takes is one, Ben. Yeah. And now we'll see if Corey can build on that. Cuts the lead to three. And you can feel the momentum, though. You know, even though the lead, the 
The Hustle's keeping the lead at five to three, but the thoroughbreds are starting to mount a little momentum here to close out this first half. He's wanting to pull it. Yeah, his coaches are even saying it. Oh, Get out of here. Milligan says, not this afternoon. He's lobbed. Oh, oh no oh, good. Let him a little too far yeah. under. And it's thrown away by Milligan. Back and forth we go. Wilford. He was looking for one. On He's going to step into it. Oh, just short. More of a line drive <laughs> on that one. And the whole bench for Detroit is up saying, hold on, hold on. We, don't, <laughs> we can't be getting into this kind of contest. Yeah. But we're running up and down the floor. And like I said, it goes against everything these guys want to do. It's just they got to try something different this afternoon to stay in this game. No good. And you can see now that the legs may be starting to go a little bit here at the end of this first half for Detroit. Eves, shot long <laughs> over the backboard. Just can't get, get one to go down. You know, they had you know, a couple they, looks to tie they the They can't game. get on a run. That's it. Just haven't shot it particularly well this afternoon. And see what Coach Anderson telling them, that, you know, try to work the set a little bit more there. If we can work our sets, we're going to slowly, you know, take advantage of this ball game. But those quick shots, low percentage shot, yeah, probably ain't the one you want right there. And here we go. It's starting to see a little bit of uh, being more vocal out there by the puzzle pieces, uh, yeah, jersey sure wearing thoroughbreds. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Step in three, oh, man, goodness. by Hampton. He draws that three-shot foul. He does that. He has a, a shooting motion where he almost throws his hands into the defender. And that's the second time he's done that from beyond the arc. Eves and uh, referee nearest us having a little conversation. Not spirited, more or less just picking no. each other's brains. Yeah, just saying like, why do you think that's a fact? Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you why. <laughs> what did you see there? Two more shots coming from Hampton. Missed the first one. Gets the second. One more underway. Davenport going to check in for Eves. Hampton's been tough in this one. Yeah, he has. Big body player for them. He can go inside and out. Two for three, Hampton at the line. Prototypical pro player these days. A guy that can pretty much play on the block or he can stand out there and shoot threes all day. Oh, he gets the corner. Oh, nice to Milligan. Milligan floater short. Ah, hey, Milligan, one more dribble. Man, it's, it's frustrating to watch because they get so close and they just they can't finish those yeah. little five and six footers. Or get the stop they needed. Boom. No. You know. They sure can't. Just like that, Hampton, five unanswered from him, pushing the lead back out. Milgan tough and in one. Nicely done. He just worked Hampton on the block in a good spin move baseline. And I think if you can get those one-on-one -on -one matchups on the block, pretty much versus in any one-on-one -on -one matchup, any five on the floor for the thoroughbreds, you're going to have an advantage down there. Yeah. I'll credit Detroit. It looked like they were fading here to close out this first half. They kind of put their foot in the sand and stopped the thoroughbreds run. You know, that's one thing. The thoroughbreds are scoring, but they're not they're not putting enough together to find themselves back into this thing. Uh, it's not it hasn't quite separated like the hustle are wanting. With the hustle are playing a tempo where they're not really going to separate yet. Sure. They, but, they're, they're wanting to, keep, to muck it up. They're yeah. wanting to, you know, keep it, you know, yucky and close. You know, if but, they pull away, so be it. But they're certainly not going to push the tempo. Thoroughbreds have got to get more more stops. They caught a lane violation on that last free throw. Man, and a tough two by Hampton. Hampton's feeling it right now. 57-50. Thoroughbreds want to try to cut this lead down before they get to the locker room. Yeah. I thought it was. There's the double, trying to pass out of it to Milgan in a corner. A lot of contact. Milgan drives. Davenport dumped down. Chuck to none. Layup, good. Nice job by none. He's had a tremendous game, especially here in the second quarter. Makes it back to a five-point game. Get a stop here and a bucket. Get it into half. 38 seconds to go before the half. Detroit up five. Look for a little two-for-one here. Yep. Hill with the ball. None. The defender gets a high screen. Rolling. Curl man. Oh, and fouled man. on the floater. 
Those half court sets that Detroit's running are nice. I yeah. mean, you know, they're, they're like you said earlier, they're, they're getting pretty much anything that they want in the half court. Thoroughbreds defensively just haven't haven't been sharp this afternoon. Stewart at the line, shoot two shots with 24 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Got the first one. Again, good little crowd here on the Sunday afternoon. It really is, yeah. I'm impressed. Good cause and yeah. got the folks in the stands to support and love to see it. Thoroughbreds look need to step it up in the second half, give them a little something to get behind them for. Right. And this is obviously a big possession, not to be Captain Obvious, but <laughs> they don't want to be down seven. You don't want to be down three possessions headed into the half. Now, that's easy to make up in the pro game. In the pro game, sure. But uh, at least give yourself a little bit of momentum, if nothing else. None who's been the hot hand. Breaks down the defender. Ah, oh, mishandles the dribble. Still loose to Milligan. Layup and fouled. With that's, one second to play. That's really good hustle from Nunn there. I know he lost the hand on the basketball, but he was able to get down the floor and outfight Detroit for it to give his – and have the uh, wherewithal to get it down to Mulligan, get himself to the foul line. Yeah. Milligan at the line shooting two with 1.1 seconds to play here in this half. First free throw, got it. You can feel the energy in the building when, when something a little bit starts to go right. Like but you said earlier, you know, they haven't been able to string it together. I think if they can string together three or four possessions in a row, you really hear this crowd come alive. Yep. Just don't give up a, a junk basket here. Yeah, nothing, you know, some of these curls like that. Oh, and a mishandle and no shot by the hustle headed into the half. 59-54 will be your halftime score. We will take a break and be right back. You're watching Oldsboro Thoroughbreds basketball on TBL TV. But if I had to pick, <laughs> it's Old Hickory. Yeah. They're all getting particip participation trophies in my belly, though. I promise right. you that. And I think they should have <laughs> thrown another B in there and put Burgu. That, yeah. Oh, that was, I'm down. Yeah, let's do it. I might have put the headset down and got me something <laughs> You would have been that down one. there for that. Yeah. All right, we got the third quarter underway. Hustle with the basketball. Leading by five, 59-54. Now you look at them right now. They're going through some sets. That's what they're going to have to do. Yeah, I'm curious to see the energy level of the thoroughbreds out of the locker room. I think the third quarter is going to tell us a lot. Shot at the horn. You're going to see a lot of – I think you'll see more shots at the shot clock horn in this half for the hustle. None to the rim. Speaking of hustle. Nice body control and, you know – Missed shots or something, they didn't do a ton. They shot a 60% there in the first half. I think in the second half, if they can get some misses, the thoroughbreds can really control the tempo of this game a little more. Yeah. Man, Derek Murphy with a big, unbelievably one. tough take. That's, that's as you said, though, earlier, the weak side help for, for Owensboro has really been, been poor. Yeah. And that's on Friday, the – Columbus Condors, they, they had several sets where they would post up and then they would send somebody off the weak side and it was bounce pass to the weak side cutter almost there. I bet we, Coach Riley and I counted six of them that led to baskets. That's tough. I mean, and it was just a frustrating thing for Coach Anderson to watch and over and over. You shouldn't have to collapse down so much defensively if your Owensboro's yeah. Wilford comes back down with the answer. Def and that's going to be the key. Defensively, they've got to get some stops. They can't string anything together because they can't get stops. Right. You know, we talk about stringing scores together, but they've got to start stringing stops sure. together. That's where it starts. I think your defense translates into offense at that point. Oh, oh man. Goodness. Weiss with a <laughs> high roll, high bounce in his favor. He's from Detroit. He's supposed to get those shooters <laughs> touching here. No. You can see the game plan of the thoroughbreds out of the locker room is to put the put the ball in the paint. Yes, you have to. Look at that. Go that's the line it. if you want. That's it right there. I and mean, that's something that the thoroughbreds didn't do to the hustle. They didn't put them in much foul trouble. No, no. But they didn't get into a game where they pounded the basketball in the paint. And, and I think you can see the first three possessions here in the second half have all gone inside the paint for, for Owensboro. Yeah. Luke Fowle at the line shooting two shots. 
First one. Ah, just short. This is a frustrating game to watch if you're if you're an Owensboro fan. Just they just can't get over the hump. No. You, you feel like they're the better team, but they just can't get it going. Missed them both. Milligan, I oh, thought almost squeezed an offensive board. Couldn't get it. Good hustle though. Getting Hill to bobble it. And uh turnover by the hustle in transition. That was a great job there back uh, in transition defense for the for the thoroughbreds. Because normally Hill gets out in that break, and it's an easy two. Yeah. And they were able to cause a turnover there. None was a hot hand towards the end of the second half. Or first, second quarter, rather, excuse me. Wilford, tough take to the rim layup. Good, man. We didn't see a whole lot of that. <laughs> He's letting him know his height. Uh, we didn't see a whole lot of that out of Wilford. He was mainly perimeter-oriented in the first half, and that's two takes by him here in this third quarter. Yeah, he did a great job using his body there to get himself open, just kind of shouldered his way in there and got an easy layup out of it. Double screen by Detroit, trying to get Hampton into the motion, but he couldn't get anything out of it. Nice job, and a Corey strip Wilford. By the Wilford. Strip. Here got come the nine. thoroughbreds, fouled. Oh, Basket almost. no good. He'll go to the line for two, though. <laughs> And I love Corey talking to the crowd yeah. at courtside over here on special needs day. <laughs> He's getting some fans involved in the game. I love it, man. I love it, too. And Corey's a, a guy in the community that everybody knows. This is a guy that wouldn't be able to go to the grocery store without people stopping Oh, him. yeah. He's, he's reaching that level here in the community. If he was wanting, like, you know, peace, I'm going to go to the store by myself sure. maybe <laughs> late at night or something, yeah. he still wouldn't be able to do no, that. I, no, he's, he's really starting to become a guy that everybody knows. You start, you know, you give them back to the youth of the community and building the new ballers. Like he talked about giving those kids confidence, you know, at a young age. And that's the most important part of basketball, even more than just natural ability. Yep. You start doing those types of things, man. That's uh, you become a legend in Owensboro pretty quick. I think these body blows to the hustle by Thoroughbreds taking it to the rim. Might see a quicker toll on them. Yeah. It's, like I say, it's a UFC fight. You just got to hang in there and. The body blows will take their, uh, you know, toll later on. Ooh, step Man. back two. By and as Murphy we say style. that. Yeah. Step back two. Ah, oh, Milligan almost had him one high up in the air for that. I thought he might just yoke it. I thought. I, that's, <laughs> what he, that's what he probably should have done there. <laughs> he was up there high enough. Tough. Good D. Good D. And here come the thoroughbreds with numbers. Eves. To none. Wilford gets a step into one. Boom. Yes, sir. You'll love to see that go down off that ball movement right there. And Corey Wilford buries it on the assist from none. Almost over the hump, Ben. They got the lead down to two. This is as close as they've been in quite yeah. some time. Yeah, it's never been out of reach, but they've never reached up and grabbed it. Oh, now it is. Oh, and a turnover. Tried to go a little too fast there. None and Eves kind of miscommunicated on who was going to throw the ball in, and neither one of them did. <laughs> they get that stepping on the end line, trying to turn it over or trying to pass Man, it in. You get within two, then you give up a bucket and then a turnover. Yeah. Just can't string it together right now. Murphy's been tough in this third quarter. Fall away shot. No good. Good defense from Meshack there. And the lob, ah, put back, no. Man. Can't come away with it. Mm. Tough break for Owensboro. Oh, wow. And, and Stewart, rather, in transition, muscles one in and draws a foul. Yeah, Owensboro just hasn't played well this afternoon. No. They'll be fortunate to, to get out of here with the victory this afternoon. 7.55 to go in the third. Plenty of time left in this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I believe if they can keep it within, you know, in single digits going into the fourth quarter, you'll really see the, you'll really see the tempo start to take an effect on Detroit. But every time Owensboro gets close, Detroit answers the bell. Yep. 72-65. They had it 67-65. And then a nice little run by Detroit to extend it out. None. Left-handed dribble. Looking for the row man. He does. Layup, good. Nicely done. Blue foul with the tough catch and finish. They really want to feed him here in the second half. 
Trying to body up down low. Yeah. See the hill pull up three short. Luke Those are the, the looks board. you want if you're Owensboro. None. All the way to the paint. Dumped down to Milligan. Lay up. Nice. That, once again, was all set up by none. He's, he's had some really nice assists here in the third quarter to go along with his nice offense in the second quarter. You know, and I thought none was going to do one more dribble in a right-handed layup, and he said he dumped it down with the left hand of Milligan, who powered it up. And another steal, good, or another turnover with a steal to boot. And here comes Eves. Oh, they had him. There, there it is. he goes. He's buried him. Layup and now, in. Uh, Easy. Wanted to get it to him earlier. If he gets that deep, it's it's ball game. And now yeah. this is really as close as they've been since, I believe, 2-0 in the game. Yeah. I don't believe the thoroughbreds have ever led. Well, maybe led a little early in the led game. Led early. We'll get a timeout by Detroit. Yeah. That's a good timeout. Detroit, very well coached team. You know, you were at, at the 634 mark here in this third quarter, and the thoroughbreds are going on a little bit of a run. And you can start to see it kind of wear, wear on this Detroit hustle program. But uh, we'll take a break and be right back. You're listening to, uh, or you're watching and listening to Once We'll Throw a Bread <laughs> Basketball it. on TBL TV. Back here at the Owensboro Sports Center for Thoroughbred Basketball. I'd like to give some of our uh, sponsors a shout out. The uh, Owensboro Thoroughbreds are bred to win. Thank you to the following for partnering with us and helping us give back to the community. Green River Distillery Company, the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum. If you're in Owensboro, go to the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum. Absolutely. It's a must. Yeah. Top notch. Wonder Boy Media, who's awesome. The Wreck at FBC Owensboro, 1027 The Game, Holiday Inn Express, RFI Properties, Owensboro Health, and Music Studios. There it is, man. What a tremendous entertainment between breaks here. Yeah. Love it, man. Getting everybody involved. And yeah, I do too. Get, get you some jerseys, get you a jersey and some shorts there. <laughs> Look good, man. Absolutely. Puzzle pieces, special needs day here on a Beautiful Sunday afternoon at the Owensboro Sports Center. 6.34 remaining in the third. It's a one-point game, Ben, as the thoroughbreds continue to chip away at this thing. Weiss off the inbound. I love Big Chuck over here on the bench for Owensboro, cheering on his teammates, man. Yeah. Vocal presence and a physical presence. Man. man oh I tell you man. what, Murphy's been tough. He has. And the thing about it is, at some point in the game, they've all been tough. You know, yeah. it's like, it feel, I feel like when they start to let their guard down, one of them will step up and pick up the slack. You know, there at the end of the of the half, it was Juwan Hampton who was unstoppable. And now, Derek Murphy's kind of taking that role on. You know, he – Murphy's a specimen. Yeah, he is. He's I'm sorry to say that. We get it. What we got? What we get here? Thought he said, I thought he called a technical foul. I, I don't know maybe what maybe it was. a warning? Been. I don't know. I don't hear anyone complaining. Yeah, about I don't either. Detroit should they have nothing to complain about. They've been, they played about as well as you could play with five guys on the floor. Push the lead back out. Up to four now. Out to the bucket and the and one. Ah, <laughs> loop foul. Thought they were going to get him with the travel there, but yeah. he got the foul instead. And I figured I'd see more drop steps and dunks with loop foul and uh, Chuck. Yeah, D Detroit, even though they're out 
manned inside. They, they're physical enough to keep them away from the rim, and that's where they're not getting dunked on. Yeah. <laughs> Ufa at the line shooting two. First one. There you go. Ooh. Hit every part every of the rim. Every part of the rim, yeah. That's that Owensboro touch we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> Uh, Sports Center is such a great facility to play basketball in. Too. It is. Watch right. and play. It is. <laughs> People keep talking about oh, we need a new facility, and maybe, maybe rightfully so, but but the Sports Center is, is it when it comes yeah. to basketball in, in, in Western Kentucky, I feel like. Yeah. It's got everything you need. And they're wanting to get Murphy going. He's in the hot hands. So they're shouting out ISOs. And a good nice job by Nunn. Nun. Didn't get that off. Yep. That's, that's all Nunn right there. Nunn's been tremendous today in every aspect. You talk about the Sports Center, though, and coming in here and doing those high school tournaments. When you come in here and you get the draw and all that, and there's no one else here but you and maybe the workers that are milling around. Yeah. You just think about all the tradition and history in this place, man. It's just something else. And a tough take. Lupal imposing himself, man. And that's the answer. You know, and, and give Coach Anderson a lot of credit coming out of the locker room. You could tell that was the drum he beat at halftime. We're getting the ball in the paint. They can't guard us in there. And that's been the difference here in the third quarter. Well, that philosophy might put them on top here with this free throw. Can they finally get over the hump, Ben? Oh, no,
Groucho. And what we got, we got two shots here for Meshack. Meshack arguing that he should be at the foul line. I believe it's five fouls anyway. Yeah. A little that confusion. We'll get, in, we'll get it right. Yeah, we'll get it right here. We're running into a little bit of uh, sound issues, but we'll try to get it going here. As uh, Detroit, after that three, is cut into their deficit, 83-81, but Lufau out the line to shoot, to shoot a couple. Free throw, bounding out. That was a nice timeout from Detroit. I feel like it was slipping from them a little bit. And uh, they come out of the timeout, knock a big three down, kind of yeah. stop the bleeding. And it's a very well coached Detroit team. Lufau goes one for two at the line. <laughs> Chuck tried to walk to the table. Chuck's ready to come in. He's been he's been coaching from the sideline yeah, for the last 10 minutes. He's ready to get in the action here. I mean, I didn't dump it to me in the post in the first half. I want my piece of the pie. <laughs> yeah, too I want a little bit. It might be off, off the knee. knee. Yeah. Yep. That's the right call. <laughs> <laughs> Big Chuck is the first one down to talk about it. Oh, we got a technical foul. On Detroit. I do believe D'Angelo Stewart just picked up a technical foul. Eighty-four, eighty-one. Wilford will go line after the technical on Stewart. Thought there was a little bit of contact going through the lane that, that attributed to the ball off the knee there. Yeah, and you know the last couple trips has been physical, uh, and even me being the uh, the thoroughbreds homer here, yeah, uh, has been called a little more stingy here in the in this third quarter in favor of the thoroughbreds. Yeah. Wilford missed the free throw. Ball doesn't lie is what, what I always heard. I don't know if it's true or not. <laughs> and Wilford mad because he doesn't miss. No. He's not at the free throw line anyway. That's a very unusual miss for Cordy Wilford. Lufau on the block. Drives baseline tough. There's no answer for that. Uh -uh. You'll have to double down on him. No, at all. That's 22 in the game for Meshack. He's having a man's game tonight. Hustle cannot do a thing about it. 11 points here in this third quarter alone. Lob, none. Smaller defender gets the deflection. Ease with the steal. Thorbred's on the run. Three on one. Wilford dribbles to the corner. Three. Yes, sir. Corey Wilford knew exactly where he was on the floor and wanted that dagger and got it. I believe. Another timeout time on the out floor. By the yeah. Hustle, yeah. And this is the will, Ben, that I was talking about wanting to see them impose. They... They're pounding the paint, pounding the paint, pounding the paint. You get a little bit of a lead, and then you can take that high percentage shot, and Wilford knocks it down. Yeah, that was a big little run there. We haven't really seen the Thoroughbreds put a big series together like they have here uh, towards the end of this third quarter. Minute 51 to play in the third. Thoroughbreds up 8, 89, 81. I mean, at the six-minute break in the third quarter, it was 73-75 hustle. And since that time, I mean – it's been a big time run. What yeah. a 16, 16 to six run from the thoroughbreds in in a five minute stretch here, less than five minutes even. And so a big explosion from the thoroughbreds. We've kind of been waiting for it the whole game. It's been very frustrating to watch because it seemed like they'll get a stop and then a miss, and then the other end there's a three, yeah. and then a turnover and another bucket, and it just compounds on them all game long. They've been scratching and clawing against the underhanded, shorthanded, I should say. A uh, hustle who who <laughs> they're living up to their title. They've hustled all day <laughs> yeah. long. They yeah. really have. No kidding. Uh, something I want to point out is the apparel worn by both teams and the referees. It's brought to you by Infinite Inc. We like to thank Infinite Inc. for being the sponsor of today's game. Infinite is the official gear provider for the Thoroughbreds and the entire TBL. Infinite was started in Columbus, Ohio, by individuals with disabilities and currently employs over 20 individuals. Uh, just a Big shout out to Infinite Inc. Man, they make, man, put together some quality Infinite gear Inc. too. Infinite Inc. is yeah, they bring in their game. I, they, those puzzle piece jerseys are sweet. Yeah, and the jerseys the the, the t thoroughbreds wore on Friday night. The Golden State Warrior look. I yeah. love those. Got the man. blue bridge yeah. here in Owensboro that Owensboro is known for. Super nice. Yeah, very That's professional up. looking gear. No oh, doubt. Oh, for sure. And a tough take by Hanton with the left hand. And, that's a sign of a well-coached team out of a timeout. They run a set play, and they go execute it. 
and uh, get the bucket they need there to stop the bleeding. Yeah. Ease off a skip. Oh, they had it when the reversal went to the block. There it is. But a lot of work to do there and in the corner. A long corner. way from the bucket for Meshack. But a nice cut. None in the floater good. None has such good body control. Right there, hangs in the air, is able to balance himself and then still have the wherewithal to knock the shot down. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the... the uh, Gamesmanship. The gamesmanship. <laughs> yeah, <I love> it. <laughs> By Chuck on the bench. Block. Me shocks us. No way. Right handed shovel pass. Oh, Eve slow down. Wilford wanting to keep running. Yeah, Eve was cutting to the basket, and Wilford saw him, and then Eve's kind of a little miscommunication there. Yeah. Tried to back off into the corner, and Corey threw it out of bounds. <laughs> They're talking to each other like, yeah, that's my bad. You play at that tempo, sometimes that's going to happen. Yep. 91-83. 45 seconds to play in the third quarter. A little bit of a run eye, by the thoroughbreds. Keep your eye on Hampton here. He's starting to heat up again. Yeah, he is. Murphy's got one deep. No good. Rebound at ease. Now, here we go. Wilford looks down, finds the three. Bank got it. it. <laughs> kid's tough. Tough. You got to tell me that kid, could, that kid could help just about any team he put him on. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, he's yeah. knocked down shot. Man, dagger. We're very fortunate to have a Corey Wilford here in Owensboro. Yeah, I mean, he's a state of Kentucky legend. No doubt. <laughs> Man, what blast. a what a shot. Great job there. Nine seconds to play in the third. Wilford with the ball near midcourt. High screen. Looking for the row. Layup at the horn. Got it. it. Full court look. Yeah. No good. That'll put us at the end of three. Owensboro 96, Detroit 85, largest lead of the night. Really good third quarter from the thoroughbreds there. And you can see the energy level starting to drop for Detroit. Yeah. Uh, and the energy level is because of the, just the, I don't want to say conditioning, but just not just a lack of bodies is hurting them. Not much they can do. I mean, yeah. they're, they're doing, we had 11 at the half, has 24 now. Wow. So. 13 points there in that frame, and uh, you tip your cap to Coach Anderson. I think Owensboro is really fortunate to have him as well, who uh, made some really nice halftime adjustments. You could see coming out of the locker room, they really wanted to pound the paint, and they did just that mm -hmm. uh, to get that lead. And once they got in the lead, they turned Corey Wilford loose. Yeah. Uh, you, they, you start to see the defense for the hustle caving in, and rightfully so, on uh, Meshack down there. And, and it's opened up some opportunities for the man that, that has left to go in double, and that, that man has been Wilford. It has. And you give a shout-out to Nunn, too, man. And he, He's done all the little things. There's some things that don't show up on the stat sheet, some that do. He has 16 in the game, and when the game was kind of slipping away from him in mm -hmm. the second, he hit some buckets to really keep it within, uh, you know, 10 points or so. So, And he's got on the loose balls. He's had some big rebounds, some nice defensive plays. He's really done it in all phases of the game this afternoon, has Mr. Nunn. About to get the fourth quarter underway. It's the uh, Thoroughbreds with their largest lead of the afternoon at 96 to 85. And <laughs> yeah, this is one I don't think you, know, you, you don't want to fool around in. You just put you put your foot on their throat here and go yeah. for it. Uh, with a team with only five players, you don't want to let them hang around. You want to go ahead and put them away. Ah, ball deflected at the with the pressure defense. Man, none in there to get it back. There's none, none again. Pull up 15 footer. Yes. Good. So steady. You almost know that's going in when it leaves his hands. That's his trademark jump shot there, right around the free throw line. Yep. Weiss with it, left side, looking for a row, man. Nothing doing. And to driving baseline. Man, what a finish. What a finish by Hampton. He's had a heck of a game. He has, man. Hampton's tough. You look down, 32 points for Hampton. Golly. And a corner J by E. Thoroughbreds break 100 with 11 minutes to play in the ball game. <laughs> I know our stat. And it, was, it was a little slow to start yeah, the game. Yeah, it really. sure was. Big third quarter. Our stat guy, the the uh, stats book, only goes to 126. <laughs> so, so he's going to have to write in some stuff. We're going to eclipse that one today, I would think. Yeah. He's going to have to write in some things. He's backing them down. No good there. Weiss with it, right side with none. The defender 
Cross is nice over. Crossover. Oh, there. man. Couldn't finish. Wow. Here he comes from left one. East. Layup. Tell you what, the pressure from Weiss from behind. <laughs> and the communication from his teammates to let Javion know he's got somebody coming up from behind. Kicked it into the extra gear there. Yeah. Took it all the way to the rim. It actually propelled him. Boom. And a three by Hampton. Wow. Oh, wow, man. 35 points from Jawan Hampton. Man. Just a tremendous outing from that young man. Yeah. Oh, blooded. Let it all hang out here. Nobody to go to the bench to. He's got to go get it. Yep. Non crossover, fade away. Oh, back iron. And there you go, Lufile with the rebound and layup. Nicely done. Keep the possession alive. Meshack's been the difference maker here in this uh, the second half. 104 90 with 940 to play in the game. Hampton beats Wilford off the dribble, layup, good at the glass. Man, he's tough. Try to look up some information on Hampton, just a tremendous player. Want to see where he came from, a little background. Yeah. Though. At Madonna University, Juco, Wayne County Community College, big time name there yeah. at, at that school, kind of led them. Uh, but moved on now to uh, Madonna University is where he went to college. Had a tremendous game today, 104-92 thoroughbreds. Found the open floor, slowed him. Slowed you know him you down. make an impression. You just start looking up where is this, what's, what's this dude sure. got his credit. And here he is again. Oh. oh, can't get one to fall. And a leak out by Don, Donovan. There you go. Lays it in. Man. Nice pass there. Is that Wilford on the outlet pass there? Touchdown. 106 92 in the third bed. Just want to continue that pace. Yeah, that was Davenport, rather. I misspoke. And a good big time. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, not sure about that one. Maybe the lower body? Yeah. Is that what it was there? Must have been. That's the only, only thing I could see. Man, that was a clean block. It was all ball there. Knee shots coming over. I'm going to look at it on our – we have a little bit of a monitor down here that I could take a peek at. Clean block up top, body down low. Maybe the hip. Yeah. Got yeah. him with a little hip check there on the way down. You know, when you're throwing someone's stuff, you're not the you're you don't feel the rest no, of your body. No, <laughs> you're just like, man, get that out of here. Yeah, man. I got all ball there, and he did. It's just a yeah. little bit of hip on hip action. And we got uh, breaking the actions. We get the floor mopped up with all the perspiration. But yeah, you're looking he, at eight fifty three to play in the game. Bill Bread's up one hundred six ninety two. With uh, Murphy going the line to shoot. Couple shots. It's a lot of per perspiration when you don't get to come out of the game and take None. a break. None. It's all out there, literally on the floor. Makes the first one. Another one underway. One for two. And the thoroughbreds aren't going to slow up. Oh, none with a sick crossover and a oh. left-handed finish. Ah. Couldn't quite get it to fall. Weiss. Open four now. Hustle. Hill. Three. Nothing. Oh, he'll advise pass from Wilford there underneath. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you see Corey going yeah. at it with his former teammate, D'Angelo Stewart. <laughs> Love it. They're just laughing. Yeah. No ill will there. <laughs> and Wilford's not going to give him the ball. No, not he'll, pass, he'll pass it. Somebody's nope. not supposed to get it. Yep. <laughs> Won't you get in rhythm for you get to the foul line? Yeah. Thoroughbreds will be back in action on Friday. Got a little extended break. They take on Dayton on Friday, and then we'll be back here at the Sports Center next mm -hmm. Sunday. Ben, Flint United coming into town. So a couple of Michigan teams. Yeah. Back to back. I wonder if Jonathan they'll be sporting the Tropics jerseys when they roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Will Ferrell action. I'll tell you what, if you're Flint and you're not wearing Tropics jerseys at some point throughout this season. Yeah, you're missing the boat on a yeah. big time uh, draw night, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then sell them. You got to sell them, too. You got to have the Jackie Moon jerseys coming yeah. in. Yeah. All right. Dobred's right side, driving base on Davenport, looking for a reversal kick out. 
Eves, ooh, he has the ball on the string, doesn't he? Missed, you missed opportunity there. Oh, oh what, what a, a pass. pass. With one on the shot clock. <laughs> Davenport up top, just a straight line pass. Very rarely do those are those successful I as an entry. A shout out to Josh Mackey on the PA over here with the Meshack Lou file, like sounding like Vince McMahon over <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, man. Boom. Oh, oh what we got? Got it on the floor. Yeah. Fortunate for the thoroughbreds. Now, Jody Hill hadn't quite got it going today. I say that, and he's got 19 points. But <laughs> when you're at 100 and you can only play five, or you're at 93 you can only play five, then yeah. everybody's going to have contributed some. Yeah. But I've, he hadn't had his best game today, but a tremendous talent. Five on the shot clock for the hustle. He's shooting. Yeah, he is. Well, you don't know it. Oh, there it is. That's shot clock violation. Yep. Yeah, well done. I think I think it might have got a foul, honestly, if if it was one more second on the shot clock. But that was a that was the right call from the uh, from the official. Fifteen yeah. point advantage for Owensboro, just trying to salt this thing away. Seven thirty three to play. Looking for a little bit of toker pressure from these uh, Detroit Hustle. Just slow the thoroughbreds down. You want that game to go into a grounded out. Here's Meshack again. He's going to go to work. Not much yep. you can really do. I mean. And the right hand. He's been nearly unstoppable. Yeah, and I'm really surprised we haven't seen Detroit switch to maybe a double down on him or somebody try to come over and force the ball out of his hands. Just haven't really seen it. They're kind of undermanned today. Davenport with the foul. Murphy taking it strong and driving it into the chest of Davenport. It's another guy, man, for them, Derek Murphy. You just wonder. Get a little background on Derek Murphy. Yeah. I'd like to see the hustle with a full team. I'd like to see him with 12 guys. Yeah, I'd say, you know, when you go when you go to someone's home gym, you're going to see a little bit different team, sure. a little different depth. And that's kind of that's what makes the road swings even tougher in the TBL, working with limited players. One of two. Murphy at the line. Under seven to play. Thoroughbreds up 110, 94. In the corner, Griffith looking for a dump down. Loop foul slam. <laughs> Gotta love it, man. It's yeah. Back the other way. Oh, oh. big collision. Yeah. Man. <laughs> That's a Hampton that lands on me, Shaq. Hope both guys are all right. Yeah. You got to – I think Hampton might just be like, hey, I'm going to – I think I'm just going to sit for a minute. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> I don't Basically. feel hurt, but I just want to sit for a minute. All right. 640 to play in this ball game. Thoroughbreds up 112 to 94. Uh, the Thoroughbreds – Steve will be taking part of the lip sync battle virtually. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. On May 1st at 7 p.m. They're doing this. It's become really popular here in Owensboro, Kentucky, this lip sync battle, and it goes towards different organizations. But it says be sure to check out the lip sync battle on May 1st at 7 p.m. Your Owensboro Thoroughbreds are going to put on a performance like no other. You can buy your virtual tickets at OwensboroLipSyncBattle.org. Man, the lip sync battle is, is something not to be missed. Yeah. I mean, it's a... It's an event here in Owensboro, that's for sure. Yeah. We got a horse race taking place, Ben. We sure do. Man, oh, man. <laughs> in the, it's almost Kentucky Derby time. I yeah. mean. The thoroughbred relay race. Absolutely. Going. Not not too bad. I was looking up uh, uh, Derek Murphy trying to get a little background on him. It's the same fellow. The Florida Tech Panthers uh, led the way in scoring 29 points per game. Wow. For Florida Tech back in 2018, 2019 season, and you could tell. I mean, he's got a background. I mean, oh, it, sure. he's cut out, man. He's, he looks the part. I say, talking to Tyler Dixon in the pregame, say he looked like an Olympic sprinter, and he yeah. does, man. I mean, he's he does. Like, really good. You know, been, been impressed. Now, I always like the, you know, obviously gonna pull for the thoroughbreds in every every game, but I always like to see the guys that come through because you never know when you might see them playing. On, you know, on, on the big screen sometimes. Yeah. Man. I mean. All these guys, super talented. I always and like to pull for them to, you know, 
go be able to get an opportunity to go play overseas or you know grow that that name and make make a living out of playing basketball. You can't really. That's the American dream there. I always enjoy seeing any sort of connection that can be made to sure uh, to your town or to someone else's town, whether it's from a high school or JUCO or a college that they played at. Uh, always really neat to to see that that little tie there. Yeah, had AJ Stewart in here on Friday night from the University of yep. Kentucky playing for the Condors. Sure did. Did a little time with the Thoroughbreds as well. <laughs> All right, 11296. Approaches six and a half to play in this ball game. Go, Breds. Oh, finds Donovan on the court or on the block. Left handed shot at the glass, no good. Pull up Trey. Balls on the floor. Look at oh. me, Shaq. Oh, and he took a bow. Dunked it home on the other end. Meshack took a loose ball elbow to the head. I saw that one right here in front he of sure him. sure did. He's slow to get up. Yeah. None. That's the first time I've seen him miss that little floater all game long. Third red's got to be careful here. Yeah, He's they down do. down to 14. There's a little bit of sense That's of urgency. Charge. Oh, they're calling block <laughs> on that one. Well, at the high school level, it's yeah, a charge. Yeah, it's Make sure no it. mistake, he dropped that shoulder. You just have to fall at the high school <laughs> that's, level. That's, <laughs> that's probably the right call, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nishak still shook up a little bit. He is. He was slow to get up after that collision. You know, that's a guy, 32 points. He only had 11 at the half. So, big, big second half adjustment from Coach Anderson. You got to think when you got these types of bodies running, that's like a car wreck, man. Oh, yeah. He took a shot, man. He... We haven't seen a whole lot of uh, Chuck out here in this game. Not, no. Well, I think, you know, I think different games will be different fits. You know, tonight's just me shot game. The way the third reds like to run up and down the floor, they don't want to go super big, I guess. Yeah. So, me shot's just kind of been that guy tonight, but. The hustle have got to hit their free throws if they're, if they're going to have any sort of chance to get back into oh, this one. Clock stopped. It's in their favor. Murphy with that first miss, though. Like that home crowd giving Lou Fowle a standing ovation as he exits the game. He's been the difference maker. He sure has. Second one is good, though, for Murphy. 112.99, under six to play in the ball game. Full court press from Weiss and went, went man to man. Davenport. Dump down. Nice take. Really nice take. Cold off the bench. Cameron Moore went right to work there. No weak side of help by the hustle at all. None. Man. But he'll bang it home at three. They won't go away. It's a 12 point game with five and a half to go, and that's well within reach. Oh, yeah. What a move from Ease, my <laughs> goodness. And he left the follow through just Woo. to make sure everyone knew. Hill. No good. He, he's talking trash the whole way down the floor. <laughs> Corey on the other end to answer that one. Yes, yes sir. 34 points on the afternoon from Corey Wilford. <laughs> Big Chuck letting them know about it on the bench. Yeah. Oh. Boom. Back the Man. other way. Hampton. Three point by Hampton. That three-pointer gives him 40 on the night. What a game from that. Yeah, he's man. having a heck of a game. Woo. Long, too. That's not, I don't know if that's the shot you want there. Yeah, I think they like more around the bucket a little bit, at least working them away inside out. Long twos are kind of a thing of the past in basketball. More. Oh. I think he might have got a part of the face I think there, he did, too. Judging by Murphy's reaction. And he's slow to get up. Rather than pain, I think he got hit across the nose. <laughs> he's faking, he said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. He's selling it pretty good. Yeah. It, it, this ain't soccer. No, he got hit along the bridge. <laughs> he got hit. <laughs> oh, man. He's in some pain. And unfortunately for Detroit, there's really nothing you can do. You no. got to suck it up and stay in the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what the referee just did. They, they've got to charge him with a timeout because they don't have a sub to put in. No. 
So we've got a timeout with 419 to play in this ball game. It's Orangeville Thoroughbreds 119, Detroit Hustle 105. Let's take a break. Be right back. You're watching Thoroughbreds basketball on TBL TV. It's good to see Derek Murphy get up under his own. He's still maybe trying to squint through some of the tears in his eyes after yes. getting hit along the bridge of the nose. He came over to the bench and didn't even let him sit down. I mean, he's like, yeah. oh, yeah, dude, you're at the foul line. <laughs> now you got to get up and go shoot a couple shots. No break. <laughs> Two like, shots for Murphy. It's like coming to the corner in boxing and not letting him get the stool. It's no. It's like, no, nah, man, you got <laughs> to get back out there. Yeah, it's tough to shoot air ball on that first one. He's looking through. He's looking through tears. Yeah, he he, he had to have got hit pretty good across the bridge. No, he yeah. still hasn't recovered. But no, there's nowhere, there's nowhere to hide. I mean, it, what's Another he gonna one do? See if he can't knock this one. Atta boy. Got that one. Just hit the one in the middle. That's what Rocky said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Dobrich trying to really just clamp it down. Wilford three, man. Got it. Thirty-seven for Corey Wilford. Oh, Weiss almost traveled. He's able to dish it off at the corner and then bangs home a three. Man, oh man, they will not go away. No. Oh, Mark Griffith threw it away into the backcourt. So an unforced turnover by the Thoroughbreds. 346 to go, and that, this game is not over. I promise you that. 122 109. Yeah, the hustle's too good for it to happen. Cut off nicely by Wilford there. Three on the way. No good. That looked good from our angle. Nice tip by Hampton. Just like that, it's an 11 point game. Got plenty of time. Three and a half to play if they could get some spurts going and, and some stops. They might yep. be cooking. Nice reverse. Right, up and under, yeah, for Moore there. I see, he might have to go to the bench and find Meshack, but they couldn't stop. But Moore, nice up and under there. Yeah, Meshack hobbled off uh, a couple minutes ago and hadn't been back out yet. What they call there? Miss, stepped out of bounds? Yeah, it must have. Coach Anderson wants a timeout of his own. 3.09 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's Owensboro 124, Detroit 111. Thoroughbreds fans, be sure to check out OwensboroThoroughbreds.com. OwensboroThoroughbreds.com is your go-to source for everything Thoroughbreds. From latest news, schedule, ticket information, and exclusive merchandise, visit OwensboroThoroughbreds.com. Been a pretty exciting game, Steve. We actually, you know, I guess if uh, – I can't call some savants or anything, but we, we kind of foresaw what might the ending would be. You, sure. You saw the thoroughbreds just uh, hang tough, hang tough, hang tough with the hustle. And then once that midway through the third quarter hit, they started to really pull away and uh, get some space. And right now you're looking at a 13-point advantage with 309 to play in the game. Yeah, and it's tough for the hustle with only five guys to continue. I mean, they, they won't go away. That's for sure. There's, they could have opened up the fourth and kind of mailed this in. You know, they're, they're, they're down. They're, you know, obviously don't have anybody on the bench to come sub them out. They could have just kind of went through the motions here and closed this game out and been no excuses. But they continue to fight, and uh, here they are. I mean, they're still in this game, only down 13 with 309. And the TBL, 13 is nothing. I mean, no. 13 is like a six-point game <laughs> yeah. at a high school level. Yes. It's about half of what you're accustomed to to what we see. So especially the way they've been shooting the ball. 
Right. We saw 20 point lead for the thoroughbreds on Friday night. Evaporate. Evaporate in minutes. Now, granted, their legs aren't what they were, you know, 30 minutes ago, but <laughs> it hasn't seemed to stop them much. No. They're still knocking down threes. It certainly hasn't stopped Jawan Hampton with 44 points Oof. in the ball game to lead all scorers. Corey Wilford with 37 to lead the thoroughbreds. And here come the thoroughbreds looking to go the length of the floor. A little full court pressure now. You said this earlier. Oof. Now they've got numbers, a four-on-one. Eves, Donovan, and a good def good deflection. A nice hustle by Stewart to get back. Really good deflection, yeah. Looked like they are going to get anything they wanted there, and Stewart deflects it out of bounds. Wilford inbound underneath or in front of his bench. And then they want that run and jump on any screens. None. Wilford, three. Long. Had about 14 on the shot clock still for that one. Uh, the shot clock never really got going there. Back and the other way. Great it drive in. by Murphy. 11-point game and almost a steal huh. with 2.46 to go. Owensville's got to be careful here. you, you got to get the ball back inside. Yeah. Continue to attack. You're up 11. You can't, you can't be settling for, for, for low percentage shots. I mean, unless the shot clock calls for it, you need to start pounding the paint again. Right. And uh, you, you're you winning. Sure. So this shot clock, you could take down to the, to the horn if Absolutely. you wanted. Absolutely. Got to work the possessions a little bit better. And that's something Detroit's done better than Owensboro today is the half-court possessions. Yeah. You know, the, the saving grace for Owensboro has been Meshack on the interior. They haven't had no answer. But other than that. They got the press break pretty good, pretty down pat. Thoroughbreds do. Nice, nice job by Wilford. More layup. Good, and he fouled. What a take. That's it right there. Killer. Moore hadn't played a whole lot this game. He subbed in when Meshack came out, and he's really made a difference. Yeah, I mean, when he attacks the rim, he's really tough. I mean, we've seen him finish through contact a couple times so far. Mm -hmm. Now they're running and jumping these thoroughbreds, trying to get them to turn it over in a pressing situation. They just haven't been. They just haven't surrendered the basketball. Hampton, step back three. No good. Rebounded by Nunn. 223 to play in the game. Here's Nunn. Lob. Moore. Good. And now a little breathing room for the thoroughbred trying mm -hmm. to put this thing away. Nice bank off the glass by Hill. 26 oh. points from Hill. Almost a turnover. Moore throws it down on the other end. Nice job there by Nunn to keep his head up against the pressure and find the open man for the slam. Well, icing on the cake here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon at the Owensboro Sports Center. A lot of points on the board for the third yes, bridge. It started slow. Hill, or Murphy rather, is, is right-handed hook shot. Hits a couple parts of the rim and no good. You know, that's, uh, they only had 54 points at the half to the thoroughbred. Just a monster second-half performance here this afternoon. He's hand out to Wilford. Wilford, three. Oh, it. man. So good. 10 of 13 from beyond the arc. Gives him 40 for the game. <laughs> that's his second 40-point performance of the season, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Murphy, big rebound block from behind by Griffith. And I think Wilford's going to settle into one again. I think he is. Even yeah. deeper. Oh. oh. <laughs> Got no problem with it. Nope. Let him fire. Let the home crowd get something to cheer for. Uh, Moore, cutting to the rim. Look at the oop. Lob. Do it. Dunk. Moore has been impressive <laughs> off the bench. He sure has. Back the other way. Stewart, we got a timeout, Anderson. And they keep it going and check in. Hunter and Offsinger. There you go. The pride of Muhlenberg County checking in. And 
Corey Wilford checks out with 40. He's and asking 40. He's, I got 40, right? <laughs> <laughs> a 40 spot. Not a bad night. He, you know, it felt like he missed several in a row there. But if you look down at the stat sheet, 10 of 13 from beyond the arc. That's a pretty good shooting yeah, night for Corey Wilford. <laughs> now, Singer, let's see if he can't step into one. Get in there. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> you and I are not surprised that that went not in. Not at all. He's hit some big ones in this sports yeah, center. Yes. If anybody, there's not a kid that shot more shots in this sports center. No, there's not. <laughs> On this team. <laughs> <laughs> On the floor combined, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love it. What a moment there. That's good stuff. 137, 117, 30 seconds remain. And the home crowd is starting to head to the exits and uh, get ready to celebrate this post game with the thoroughbreds here. Yeah, it was a good little good crowd tonight. It was. It's something you're going to see grow throughout the season. I'm confident in that. And a three with four seconds on the board and a nice offensive rebound. And they're going to get a push late. You know, in years past, they've kind of gone head-to-head -head with high school games and stuff, and it's been – you're having the split basketball crowds. Yeah. I love the, the time of year that it is now. Yeah, I think this is the prime time for, for the TBL. And, I, you know, I'm not sure you, – you might know the answer if it was pushed back because of COVID or if they pushed it back to get through the high school I season. think slightly pushed back because of COVID, but I hope they keep it here for good. I think I this too. is a better time of year. Once college – you know, basketball has kind of died off at the college and high school level. You know, you just – Kind of pro season right now. Pro, yeah, you're right. Pro, pro ball still uh, churning along, and I think this is a perfect time to play it. Oh, we had a ball going onto the court by a couple kids dribbling around. <laughs> Twenty-one point six to go. Eves with it. Lob, another, another slam. slam from Griffin this time. And he got a technical for smacking the backboard, I guess, there. <laughs> I thought that was allowed. Just I did, too. <laughs> a pull-up and a slap is what we got by the official call from the referee. He's telling me I didn't pull up. I smacked it on the way down. <laughs> he kind of did, though. Yeah. Really, I didn't see him pull up at all, honestly. But nevertheless, not going to ruin the the high flying slam jam. No. I'll take it all day. Twenty point lead. You give him the point for the uh, the smack the backboard there. Ten seconds to play. Game just trickling down to its final conclusion. Can we get a reach in foul on the thoroughbreds? <laughs> Did With, you make overtime? Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. 7.9 to play in the game. <laughs> Calling fouls to the horn is what we're doing. Yeah, what a game today from uh, Corey Wilfer with 40. I mean, Meshach Lufau with the big second half, obviously. I thought none was tremendous all yes. game long. I mean, uh, all in all, just a really good second half. I got to give a, a shout out to Coach Anderson. I just thought, you know, he made the adjustments at the half that uh, – Made it tough on Detroit. Put this game away earlier than probably it could have if they had kept playing at the same right. type of tempo and shooting the same type of shots they were in the first half. I'm not so sure Detroit could have overcame the five players anyway, but uh, but still, I mean, I think it got out of hand a lot sooner with that strategy to pound the paint. Yeah. And we got a little gamesmanship between a couple opponents, and they'll dribble out the dribble out the horn and. Uh, Thorbreds go uh, undefeated on their home two-game home stand here at the Owensboro Sports Center. Moves their record to what three and one on the season. Yeah, good start for the uh, Thorbreds here at the Sports Center. And both free throws were good at the end, and we get our final score of 139-121. And it was an entertaining game by the Hustle. It was. I mean, you got to give them a lot of credit coming in shorthanded. You know, they battled and put up a heck of a fight. I mean, they had me looking up, you know, the players to see where they came from. Guys like Derek Murphy with a tremendous game, but really Jawan Hampton was the guy who stood out, man. What a tremendous performance from him this afternoon. I believe he finished with 44 points on the game. Yep. 
Uh, again, your final score, Owensboro Thoroughbreds 139, Detroit Hustle 121. We'll take a break and be right back for end of game stats and analysis. You're watching Thoroughbred Basketball on TBL TV.